During the past few years when I read stories of scripture, especially stories around Christmas, even Easter, I don't feel it so much as something outside of me that happened centuries and centuries ago, but it's something that's going on within my own mind, my own heart. I would say I, I internalize it much more, as many of you do, I'm sure, as well. I know that in the last several years there's been a lot of books out written about uh, the non-historicity of the stories such as Christmas and even Easter, the Jesus Seminar and Bishop John Spong. And sometimes I think they miss the whole point, that it could be that it's all just story, but it still has a meaningful message that speaks to all of us. Even Pope Benedict a few days ago had a book released by the Vatican in which he is explaining to the, the Catholic followers that most of the Christmas story is not true. It's just fable. It's mythology, but it still speaks to us. And he says, but he points out that doesn't mean that there wasn't truly a man named Jesus. A few years ago, I did a, some book studies and reading, and I even wrote articles that upset some that there's a possibility that the man Jesus knew it wasn't even ever a historical figure, but a part of many countries' mythology in the eastern part of the Mediterranean that went way back to ancient Egypt. But be that as it may, the story still speaks to us. All the stories talk about the darkness that closes the northern hemisphere, but yet at that winter solstice, light returns. But it isn't just sunlight, it's the divine sonship. It's a part of us all. And so it's like reading some of those Aesop fables years ago or having them read to us. We knew they were fables. We knew they were myths. But some of their lessons have stayed with you and me and change us. And so these stories can be. John the Baptist is one of those stories. Probably never really was a John the Baptist. But it speaks to us. We're like a voice to be crying out in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord by teaching people that they have been forgiven of their sins. In my early years, many years ago, I used to read that lesson almost every day as I used like the, the office of prayers. And every time I read that, it wasn't just John the Baptist I was reading about being a voice in the wilderness. It was an affirmation of who I was. I internalized it, sometimes almost to the point of tears. That's what I'm talking about. What was the message of John the Baptist? Is The message is that we are the divine sons of and daughters of God. We're all prophets. That's the message of the scriptures way back in the old Hebrew writings. The great I am that appeared to Moses saying, I am who I am. Follow me. And that's who he was. Jesus was the great I am. Jesus is the one, the writer of John, who said in the late first century, as many as receive that message are given the power themselves to become the very sons and daughters of God. Not our bodies, not our minds, not our genders, not our ages, but our spirits are one forever. And that's the beginning of giving us peace. It's not something we can buy, it's something that is given to us. A few days ago I was with my mother down in Chautauqua County and I took her to uh, Jamestown. She wanted to see one of her friends there who's been in a nursing home for almost seven years. She's a wonderful lady. She was a lady who played the organ in the Baptist church I grew up in many years ago. In fact, she played when my wife and I became married. But we were talking and I asked her if there was anybody that came to have services, especially this time of the year. And she says, oh yes, there's a nice minister that comes here almost every Sunday and speaks for about 25 or 30 minutes. And he preaches the gospel. He tells us we only can be saved by the accepting of the blood of Jesus. And he even gives an invitation to... I don't know how they come forward, most of them in, in wheelchairs as they are. Later on, we went to a restaurant to eat, and while we were eating, there were two ladies sitting in the next booth to us who were talking quite loudly about another lady who was not apparently acting very nicely. And the one woman said in a very clear voice, I keep warning my friend that she had better change her ways or she's going to be in deep trouble. And then I, she says, I even tell her, God is watching every sin, every fault, and if she doesn't repent, she's going to pay for it in a big way. And she nods her head in great authority. Oh, we grew up with such fearful, 
of a God that's always going to punish us and watch us and keeping a record of all of our wrongs. And if we don't trust in the blood, you know, we will be damned in eternal hell forever and ever. What an awful scary message. And even if we try to believe it, we're, we're not certain that we really are following it because we keep sinning and falling so many times afterwards. What if we could just come to that simple message which is written about in scriptures? That Jesus came to tell us that by repentance, by changing of our minds, that we'll realize the kingdom, the divinity, the sonship, the daughtership is within us. It's all there just for accepting it. It's free. And what he died for was not to pay for our sins, but to show us that the body is nothing. We can give it freely. We can forgive those who even maybe take it from us, because that is not who we are. That's so important to realize what the stories of Christmas and Easter are all about. The darkness of living in our bodies full of error and sinfulness and mistakes, terrible ones sometimes we make. But the next message is, they're all forgiven. The voice goes into the wilderness and telling the people they have forgiveness, they are remitted from all their sins. This was long before he even, even met Jesus. Just by coming and, and admitting it and accepting that presence in their lives. And they're changed. They're over. We have that Christ self unstained amid all the darkness and violence of the world. In India there's a story about great Zumba the tailor who could make perfect clothes for anybody who came to him. One day an older person went to him and said, Zumba, I need a new coat, and I want it to fit perfectly. Well, Zumba made him, after measuring him, this coat. And when the older man went back to try it on, well, it folded up in the shoulder areas, and one sleeve came down too far, and one was up too short. And he said, Zumba, how could you be a great tailor and make an ill-fitting coat like this? Well, Zumba looked at him and said, Well, old man, if you would stand up straight, take a deep breath, it would fit you perfectly. And so the man took a deep breath, put his chest out, his head up, everything fell in place. When we walk around in life sagging in depression and guilt and fear that God is always keeping a record and is going to cash in on us if we're not ready, we're like the old man in the coat that doesn't fit. But when we realize that all our sins are forgiven, past, present, and future, we can live in freedom. One of the books that we've been reading in the congregation and discussing for the last few weeks by Deepak Chopra, and he has a section there where he describes people who do not understand that Christ self within them and some of the attitudes they exude. He says, you're always tired and feeling stressed out. You're always feeling pulled outside of yourself. Your attention is always dominated by the external world around you, either the, the, in politics, the community, or your house, and not within. You let others think and tell you what to do. You're always influenced by fear and anxiety. On the other hand, he says, if you accept yourself as this one steep soul, which is your true self, the Christ self, Christ self you will feel centered. Your mind will become clear. You will feel free of boundaries. You will become keenly self-aware. And you will feel supremely loved and absolutely safe. What a gift. What a gift can come at Christmas as we accept that and live it out by being that voice. Telling people who are living in the wilderness of discouragement and darkness that light can come. Light can come by wanting it by inviting it in, and by living as if it were so. And you will have peace, and I will have peace. We will manifest that in our churches, in our homes, or wherever we may be, today and in the future. God bless you. Be that voice of Christ and of forgiveness. Amen. And have a pleasant day.